Hey there, welcome back. I'm Ron Mullen. In this video, I'm going to show you how I built this pie safe. Now, a lot of you don't, probably don't know what a pie safe is, but back in the early 1900s, everybody had a pie safe. It has tins in the front that are punched to let air go through. You'd put your pies in there. This has, a, this has two drawers with dovetails, two doors that open up, and there's three shelves in there. This is made of solid cherry. I'm going to show you how I made it. So come on, let's go. The client sent me a picture of an antique pie safe, so this is where I got my inspiration. I used chalk to lay out the rough dimensions on the boards that I'm going to use for the legs. Now I've planed one side of these boards after I cut them. I'm going to glue them together and this will be one leg. After they're glued together and trimmed up then I'll put an eighth inch piece of veneer on here so I end up with face grain on three sides of these legs. The legs are out of the clamps and I found a problem with this one leg. This is the face of the leg and this is the back of the leg. Now this leg has a bow in this direction and it's about an eighth of a little bit less than an eighth of an inch right here in the center. I'm going to cut probably two kerfs right about here with an eighth inch wide blade and I'm going to cut them three quarters of an inch deep. I've cut some eighth inch wide stock here that is a little bit wider than an eighth of an inch. I'm going to clamp this down to open these up and then I'm going to put these in each one of those and let the board come back to where it wants to be. That's my plan. I hope it works. Okay, I've got the two grooves cut and I've got a couple boards right under those kerf cuts. So I'm just going to start clamping down on these ends to bend this board. I don't know how far I'm going to have to bend it, but I'll just give it a little bit of a twist here. See if anything fits. That one's starting to go. Oh, that one went in. Okay. Didn't have to do much there. Okay, now then I'll loose, release the clamps. Now we'll see what we got. I hope this works. Nope. I need a thicker one right there because it's good across here, but when it gets to here, it still bows down a little bit. So I need to put one of those thicker ones right here. So that's what I'll do. After adjusting the thickness of those shims, I was able to get this leg perfectly flat over its 52 inch total length. Okay, I've got the legs planed and surfaced and everything to uh, their uh, final size. And I'm really pleased how the little pieces of wood I put in took all the bow out of the legs. They're nice and straight. The next step is to cover this edge of the board uh, with some veneer. I'll resaw some lumber and plane it down to an eighth of an inch and then I'll put that on this edge. That way I've got face grain on all three exposed sides. This double stack three inch feather board sure makes resawing a breeze. Okay, I'm gonna trim these off with, um, it's a straight bit with a bearing on the bottom. This beautiful board is over 12 inches wide. I'm going to resaw it and then plane it down to a quarter of an inch, and I'll use that for the panels in both sides. So I decided to run a test piece of that 12 inch wide board through my band saw to see if I had everything set up perfectly. Well, I did. It, it saw right down the middle, 12 inches wide, which I'm really happy about that. But here's what happened. The moisture difference in this board has made it bow like this. So I've got two pieces with a big bow on them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rip it down the center and then resaw these pieces and then glue it back together. So I'm pretty sure that'll take care of the problem. So I've cut them down, planed them down to thickness, and now I'm going to glue them back together. I really hate to 
cut that nice big wide 12 inch board apart it kind of breaks my heart to do that but it's the only way i can do it next it's time to lay out for the mortises in order to cut the tenons for the side panels the bottom rail is going to be five inches wide so i mark out five inches that's the overall width and i want the mortise and tenon to be two inches so i found the center line between the outside of the board and i marked that and the board is the rail is going to be a quarter of an inch in from the front so i mark that and i find the center line and then i'm going to make a two inch mortise so here's where my cut is going to be Now that I've got the mortises cut and cleaned out, now I'm going to cut the tenons on the rails. I've got it marked where this rail is going to set. And then I'll just go to the mortise and make a line there, make a line there, and that's how wide I'll make the tenon. Next I'll start cutting the shoulders. I've set a stop block here, the length of the tenon. Now I'm going to cut the cheeks of the tenon. The uh, tenons are a little bit too thick to go down in there. So I've got a bench hook. And I'm going to trim a little bit off of each side of the tenon. I'm using a small shoulder plane. I'll do one side on there. One on that side. See how this fits? Yep. Yep, that's what I like right there. Now I need to cut the grooves for the panel. I'm using a quarter inch uh, spiral upcut bit. And I'm going to cut it a, a quarter of an inch deep. I've adjusted the fence to cut the groove between the mortises. I put a line here to start the cut and a line here to end the cut. Okay, the sides are finished. Now it's time to turn my attention to the inside of the case. And that is for the drawer runners here and also for the top of the drawer and the bottom shelf. That frame that goes in there needs to be secured to the front and back rail. I'm going to cut a notch in here and a notch here and down at the bottom, taking the legs, squared them up, clamped them together. Now this is where the drawer is going to go. I'm going to drop down six inches And the cut is going to be on that side. I'll draw a line across the inside. This is the front of the piece. And then I'm going to do it three quarters of an inch. So I'll put another three quarters of an inch. Draw another one. And then in the very top one, it's going to come down three quarters of an inch. This comes out, and this comes out, and that comes out. And then I'll do the same down here at the bottom. I'll come up four inches and mark it. I've already got my mortising machine set up to cut these. I'm not going to show you. You've already seen how the mortising machine works. So I'll be back when I get these cut. Okay, those notches are all finished. All I need to do is get in there with a the chisel and clean them up. And then we'll move on to the next step. This pie safe has two drawers at the top. The next step is to make the web frames that go above and below those drawers so that they have something to ride on. So that's my next step.
I'm using loose mortise and tenons to build this web frame. They're really easy to make using this mortising jig that I built. Time to glue these frames up. I've got everything cut. The dowels, they work well. Nice tight fit. Forty three and a half. Forty three and a half. Right on the money. Next is the bottom shelf. It goes across the bottom right here. The doors fit down right flush with that. So it's basically the same shape as the top web for the drawers. So what I'll do is I'll just lay it on there, mark it out, and then cut the corners. I finished all the grooves for the side panels, all the mortises for the frame, the shelf supports, and everything in between. Now it's time for a lot of sanding. Before I glue the entire assembly together, I've cut some rails to go across here that the shelves will set on. Now it's time to assemble this beast. I hope that all these mortise and tenons and slots and grooves that I've cut all fit together right. I've done a dry fit on it and it seemed to work pretty good so so it's time to get it done. I've taken six quarter poplar and cut it square and I'll just clamp those that way I can hold it to the bench and hold this upright and it makes it a lot more secure when I'm gluing it up. Well, that didn't hurt my back too much, but I got it down. I've taken the other clamps off. I put pipe clamps on the top and the bottom. I'm real pleased because this thing is absolutely square. I'm in a happy place right now. Okay, I've got the clamps off the case. I'm pleased with the way everything has turned out. It's very solid. The panels on the sides looking nice and smooth. Next, I need to turn my attention to the rails and the styles to make the doors. Okay, this is what I need to do, uh, the rails and the styles. There's two doors. The tins will be in those six positions there. And I want straight grain for all the rails and styles. And I'm going to get them from this board. I marked out where I want them from. The outside edge of these boards is nice straight grain. I'll end up with this nice... Um, whatever you want to call it in the center. I'll use it somewhere I'm sure, but that's my next step. Okay, it's been a couple days since I've planed these down. Now it's time to cut them down to their finished dimension. I'm going to be using uh, loose mortise and tenons on these doors so I can cut the rails down to the exact dimension and I don't have to add for uh, tenons. All the mortises are cut. Now it's time for some assembly. Okay, the doors are finished and I've taken one of the doors and hand planed the top down smooth across here and to get it to just fit in there perfectly. Now what I want to end up with is a sixteenth of an inch top and bottom clearance. And I like to use playing cards to do that. Six playing cards equals a sixteenth of an inch. So what I'll do is take that eighth of an inch off the bottom and I'm going to uh, use my sled and my table saw to get it close and then I'll fine tune it with a hand plane. Okay, I've got them cut to length. I'm satisfied with the length. And next I need to cut the center so that they'll meet in the middle. Okay, what I'm doing is I'll just take a pencil make a line up there. I've got these overlapped just a little bit. And then I'll take this one 
and fine tune this with a plane. Okay, I've got about a sixteenth of an inch here and it goes up and it pretty much dwindles off to nothing up here. So I need to work on this half of the door. I'm going to start with this smaller number four and a half. I love this. This is a Lee Nielsen plane. I love this plane. Also need to check for square all the time also. Yeah, that looks pretty good. We'll give that a try. Okay, that turned out pretty well. <clears throat> I've got about a sixteenth of an inch gap straight line down through there. So the uh, doors are fitted to the opening now. Uh, after I add hinges, then I can fine tune the drawer doors if they need to be. So the next step is to sand the doors all down and then I'll route a rabbit in the back of these for the tins to set in. Hinge placement can be really important when you're applying doors or anything that uses hinges. You have to make sure that they're this way in the right direction and also this way in the right direction because if they get off a little bit then the door will twist in the opening. I've marked the top where the hinge goes. Mark the other end of the hinge. After that I'll take a chisel Put it on those lines and what this does, it makes a definite line there that I can get up close to with the router. And I just cut a little V out of there, another little V out of there. Now I take my router, I'm using a, a quarter inch straight bit and I've got a little light here that I can put down in there, it helps me see it. Now if I hit it right, that hinge ought to sit right down in there. Yep, that's good. It's got just a little bit of side play, but that's allowable. So to keep all these hinges in exactly the right place, I'm going to back this end up with a block of wood. Now this hinge will have to stop right there. If I do that on all of them, they're going to be absolutely identical on the uh, door. Now to get these holes started, I'm going to use this centering bit. Now then, this hinge is flush with the back of that. That means this hinge pin is going to be parallel with this door. And if I cut the same way in the post, everything is going to end up straight and parallel. Now I've decided not to recess the hinges on the post. What I've done is I've cut a piece of wood and I've marked where the hinges um, go. And then I'll just clamp this piece on there. And what this will do, like on the doors, It'll hold the hinge in place so I can drill the holes. Now I've got a perfect lineup with the door. All the rabbits are cut in the back of the door and now I need to square off these corners. I've got all the corners squared up on all the doors now. The tin will lay in here like this. Now, of course, this is the back. I've got some room there. And then I'll just take a piece of cherry and put all the way around the frame to hold it in there solid. Next on the agenda is the drawer boxes. I'm going to use poplar. They're going to be half inch thick. So I've taken some poplar. I've planed one side and I've straight lined both edges. What I'm going to do is run them through the bandsaw and resaw them down to a little over half an inch, and then I'll do the final planing down to a half an inch. Uh, 
Okay, I think this pie safe deserves dovetailed drawers. So I've got them all machined to half inch thick. I've cut them to length. I don't have them cut to the exact width yet. After I cut the dovetails, then I'll narrow them down to the width I want. But I have to lay them out to cut the dovetails. So I'm going to find the nicest looking part for the inside of the drawers, like this. And I'm using a Porter Cable dovetail jig, so I need to make some marks. And the marks go on the inside of the drawer. So this is going to be the left side, this is going to be the back, this is going to be the right side, and this is going to be the front. And then I need to put an arrow pointing to the top of the box. Now those are all marks I need. Now let's move over to the dovetail jig. This is the jig. It consists of this finger plate. It has two clamps here that hold a piece of wood this way. A clamp holds a piece of wood this way. And the router, I use a dovetail bit with a collar and this collar rides inside of those grooves like that. Now it takes a while to get one of these jigs set up but once you've got it set up it's one right after another they're all perfect. Now let's uh, cut some dovetails. First step is to take one of the sides. Now those arrows I put for the top of the drawer box they always go to the outside of the jig. So I'm going to cut dovetails on this end. This is a side so slide that up in there and I'm just going to raise it up above the level here and this is going to be the front the arrow is going to go out and I'll use use this just to slide that in there get that tight and then I drop this one down and get it perfectly smooth and get it straight This is very important getting this set up right here because if it's off a hair breadth, it's going to, it can throw off uh, all the dovetails. After I've got that secured, then I set the finger plate down on there, set it flat. This is already, this has also been adjusted to get the proper depth of the dovetail. Now let's get the router at it. Yeah, those are pretty. Let's see how they fit. Yeah, that's nice. I like that. Drawers out of the clamps. I've sanded it. I've chamfered the inside edges. Now it's time to put the bottom in. Rather than assembling this box with the bottom inside, I've cut the back a little bit narrow and I'm going to take the piece of plywood and drop it down in the grooves like that and it goes right in. That's a good fit all the way around and then on the bottom I'll just take a couple screws and drive them in here to hold the bottom in. Now it's time to fit the drawers into the cabinet itself. I've put along the outside edge a drawer guide that will keep it parallel on the outside. Now I need to find out how wide the strip needs to be on the inside. So here again I'm going to use playing cards. I've got I think six playing cards here and I'll put these on the outside edge and push that drawer against that way. I'll do the same on this side. Now then I need to split that difference so what I'll do is measure between the two drawers which comes out to right at an inch and three quarter. I'm going to cut a strip that inch and three quarter wide and put between these two drawers. Okay I've got my strip. I'm going to slide it in there. It's a nice snug fit. Now then I'll take the cards out and see how we'd move. 
yeah, that's a nice, smooth, tight fit. I've got enough wobble there that just gives it a nice, smooth fit. That's a little bit tight, so I'll have to move this just a little bit this direction. And when I fine-tune this centerpiece, we'll be good to go. I put the centerpiece in here, and now it's time to uh, figure out the dimensions and how to attach the drawer fronts. I'm going to use this really nice piece of cherry out of a long board that I've cut up. I've cut it in half. Each will be a drawer front. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to overlap the drawer front by 3 eighths of an inch all the way around. I've put some double stick tape on the back of this. Next I'll line this up along these lines and I'll put a couple clamps on here to hold it. And then I'll just take the drawer and press it against the front where I've got that double stick tape. And now I've got the drawer front attached to the box. And then I'll run a couple screws through it to permanently attach it. Yeah, I like that. It's a good solid drawer. Now I'm going to round the outside edge of this over with um, a half inch round over bit. Now I'm going to work on the top. I had a board that's 10 feet long and it is uh, 13, 13 and a half inches wide. I've cut it in half, but as you can see it has a lot of sap wood here that I don't want to use. So I'm going to have to trim these two boards down before I put them together to make a 16 inch wide board. Uh, so that's my next step. Okay, I've trimmed it off and I've got it down to um, I've got it down to 18 inches. I only need 16 inches. I've got these marks so I know which is the end of these boards. Because if you have a board like this, you cut it in half and then you flip one board end for end, you have the grain going one direction and the other grain going the other direction on the other board. What will happen on some woods is after you finished it and you walk by it, the way the light reflects off of those two boards will look differently so it's very obvious that there are two boards there just looking at the reflection off of it. Okay, I got real lucky on this board. This board wasn't warped at all. I can't believe 10 feet long and for almost 14 inches wide. Uh, that That's just a shout out to Mims Lumber in Nashville as to what good lumber they supply. One way to check to see if when you glue these two boards together if it's going to be flat is I put it in the vise just take a clamp and just lightly clamp them together. Don't put a lot of pressure on just so they don't fall off. And I can see there that it's not quite flat. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run them through the table saw one more time and just take just a, uh, just a saw blade's width off. Just fine tune it just a little bit. And if that doesn't get it down to flat, then I'll take a hand plane and manipulate just a little bit further. Okay, I ran it through the table saw and it wasn't quite right so I took my hand plane and made one thin pass with just a little bit of an angle to it and now then I'll set this up on here now I'm not going to clamp it I'm just going to let it set where it wants to set because that's where it'll set when it's clamped Let's see what happens here yeah that's good that's good for me right there it's just barely off after I sand it all down everything it'll be good to go Okay, I've got it all clamped up, and let's see if it's flat. Yeah, yeah, that's nice and flat. You don't need to have a jointer to make all your edges perfectly square. Just before you start a project, go through all your tools, set them up as square as you can get them, and run some test pieces. That's the best way to tell if your tool is square. That way you don't have to do any adjusting to the wood after you've cut it. On the back of this case, I've got an issue where the drawer web frame, it's a little bit proud of where the plywood back is going to go in here, and I need to trim this off. Now, I could take a chisel and hog this off, but I want a nice smooth edge here, and I'll show you a plane that I'm going to use to make it work. What I've got is a regular shoulder plane here. It's a record 077. 
I hope you can see that on there. And it's made in England. It's a good solid plane. But the cool thing about it is that on the front is a screw that comes out and the nose comes off. Now I've got a blade that runs right up to the front of the plane and I can get in there and cut that. Okay, let's see how this little cutie will work here. I'm going to advance the blade just a smidge until I get just enough. One more. See, I have to keep coming back here to get new wood because it's cutting it nice and smooth. Yeah, that's perfect right there. Way to go, little buddy. Now I'm going to convert my shop into a spray booth. I've got a separate video that explains how I built this whole thing. All right, my booth is set up, floor is clean. I've got all my lights set up around. I've got one light back here I'll turn on uh, when I'm ready to spray. I've got the filters in my fan. Uh, the hinges, I'm going to put blue tape on those to cover those up. The drawers, I want them open about that much so that I can spray all the way around here, but I don't want to get any spray inside. So what I've done, I've just taken a piece of tape wrapped around there. That'll take care of that problem. and. I've got them on furniture dollies. I've got them clamped on so they don't slide around. So one more pass with a tack cloth and I'm ready to start spraying. I'm using an HVLP sprayer. I'll put three coats of General Finishes water-based gloss clear coat on it. I'll sand with 400 grit paper between each coat. When the finish is dry, I'll rub it down with a brown paper bag and this will end up just smooth as glass. If you like this, please hit that like and subscribe button. I sure would appreciate it. And check out some of my other videos. I've got a lot of woodworking videos. See you on my next one.